Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mount Diablo Unified School District Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event this evening. We have some fantastic schools here with us today as well. My name is Clarissa, and I'll be your facilitator for this event. Before we do get started, there are a few housekeeping items we do need to go over. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And there's also a Q&A button on your screen where you can ask questions at any time during the session. If you also have questions for a specific school, be sure to mention them within your question. This is also just one of many sessions happening this evening. After this, there is an additional hour of more college sessions to attend. So be sure to go back to the schedule and check those out. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash MDUSD. Now, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first school, which is CSU Channel Islands. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin Ellison. I'm an admission counselor at CSU Channel Islands. I'm going to go over some fast facts about CSUCI and some of our admission requirements throughout the presentation. There are QR codes, so definitely have your phone out ready to take some pictures to learn more information about our campus. Make sure this is going. There we go. Okay, so CSU Channel Islands is a part of the CSU system. We are the 23rd of the CSU campuses, so we are the youngest CSU founded in 2002. Being younger, we are relatively smaller, about 7,000 students on our campus, which does allow for a smaller class size of an average of 23 to 1. 61.8% of our students are first generation, which means that they're the first in their families to a graduate from a four-year institution. So we have a ton of support programs out there to help our students transition to a four-year institution and also successfully graduate. We are also a Hispanic serving institution, HSI, which means at least 25% of our student body has self-identified as Hispanic. And we do get federal funding for that. And why does that matter to you? We give that back to all of our clubs to make sure we have a safe and diverse campus. We are located in Camarillo, California. We are not on an island, unfortunately. We are landlocked for about an hour north of LA, hour south of Santa Barbara, give or take some traffic. We do have Echo, our dolphin here. He is our mascot and a few um, of our rankings here. What I like to talk about is that we are ranked the eighth safest campus in all the United States. We do have 26 majors and 38 minors on our campus. You might be thinking 26 majors, that's not that much. We have emphasis associated with many of our majors, which allows you to focus on an area of study. So for example, in business, we have a marketing emphasis. In uh, liberal studies, we have a teaching emphasis. So we allow you to kind of pick and choose those electives so you can gear your studies in that area. We have some colors here. So our red majors are our most popular majors on our campus, psychology, business, biology, health science, and then sociology. We have two impacted majors on our campus, that's uh, nursing and mechatronics engineering. Mechatronics engineering is only open to first time freshmen. Every other major on our campus is not impacted. So as long as you meet admissions requirements, you're guaranteed a spot in that program. Again, impacted programs. Our first time freshmen are not going to be applying directly to the nursing program. They will be applying as pre-nursing. That does not guarantee you a spot in the nursing program though. If you do have any questions about nursing, go check out their website. They are having uh, info sessions. The next one will be October 14th. And Mechatronics Engineering, uh, you'll be applying as normal through our Cal State Apply. And then these are the supplemental criteria once uh, you get in for that. Um, and I do just want to talk about our really cool amenities, something's kind of unique to our campus. So of course, we have lots of resources and great things for you to get part of. Um, but here are some bucket list things for our students. We have a Channel Islands Boating Center. So we actually give free sailing, kayaking, and paddleboarding classes to all of our students. You can take them as many times as you want. You can start off as a beginner and go all the way to an expert by the time you graduate. And we do have a research station out on Santa Rosa Island. So we do have some connection out there. Our students get out there through their coursework or with our campus rec center, they'll take students out there to do camping and hiking trips as also. We can guarantee housing for all four years, but you are not required to live on our campus. Here are just our four villages, Santa Rosa's for our first time freshmen, Santa Cruz for our sophomores, and Anna Kappa and the University Town Center for our upperclassmen. You can see there's tons of different events on there and they do really cool events throughout the year. Cost of attendance. So we are some of the nation's lowest tuition for public institution. We're around 6,800 for the year. Uh, and we have lots of, oops, we have lots of opportunities for you guys to get financial aid. We give out over $760,000 in scholarships each year. And our application for on-campus scholarships will open up January 1st. 
So after you apply, you're going to transition to getting all of these scholarships and this federal aid. So make sure that you are get, receiving those. About 79% of our students receive some form of financial aid. Now our application, this, the Cal State Apply or the CSU application is going to be open October 1st. And there's two deadlines for you all to kind of uh, take into consideration for CSU CI. So first is November 30th for the impacted major, which is for Mechtronics Engineering, and all other non-impacted majors will be December 15th. It is $70 per school you send that application to. You're filling that information out once and sending it to all the different CSUs that you are interested in. Seniors, make sure you are reporting your senior grades as in progress and planned. Our freshman requirements for CSU Channel Islands is just to graduate from, a, from high school, complete your A through G pattern, graduate with a 2.5 or above A through G GPA. We will not be using the CSU system as a whole. We will not be using the ACT or SAT for fall 2022 admissions, and we will be accepting pass or credit grades from winter 2020 all the way through, through spring 2021. If you do have a GPA between a 2.0 and 2.49, these are the supplemental criteria for CSUCI specifically. We, we will convert your GPA into a grade uh, a point system and we'll give you extra points for any extra courses you've completed. If you graduate from a California high school, if you're a first gen college student, and if you are a part of an educational program, we have a virtual tour going on. So you can go down here. Hillary's awesome. She has lots of information for you, but we are also on campus and we are doing in-person tours as well. You can check out that link there and get onto our, uh, our listserv. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me, our admissions, get on our social media, hear what we're all about and let me know if you have any further questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that presentation. Up next, we have CSU Chico. Good evening, everyone. Just going to share my screen real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, CSU Chico. Uh, presences. Sorry, everyone. I am working from home, so I'm going to make this quick. Um, welcome to the CSU Chico State presentation. My name is Lawrence and I'm an admissions outreach counselor with CSU Chico. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about where we're located. We are in Northern California with lots to do in our surrounding area. We do have our last National Park Arena, Lake Tahoe area, as well as the city life of Sacramento and the Bay Area with uh, one and a half to three and a half hours away from us. Once again, I must apologize. I do have kids and they must not be knowing that I'm working right now. Um, so this is a picture of our campus map. We are a true college campus, right? And all that means is everything is going to be located on site. So when you're on campus, everything will be within walking distance. You need to get to the on-campus housing, to your classroom, to the student service centers, administrative offices, or even the Wildcat Rec Center. You can get there within a five to 10 minute walk. Now, if you look at our campus, everything in green is a part of our campus. But as you look at our campus, we do have this creek that flows right through our campus that really adds to the beauty of our campus. Um, also, our town is built around our university. So all that down there in white right there is the start of our downtown area where the um, community will put on different events, which we'll talk about later on in the presentation. Okay, so we do offer on-campus housing for the students who do choose to live on campus. We have eight residence halls. We're gonna take care of all the student amenities. That way they're not having to worry about where they're gonna get their mail sent to or how they're gonna get their laundry done and parking and things like that. Um, we do provide 24 seven staff support for students who do wanna, um, who do live on campus. Um, that way, if they have any problems within their uh, residential hall, they can get that taken care of right away. Um, for our students who do live off campus, it's really awesome. Um, we do have 90% of our students live in a one to two mile radius. So whether you're on or off campus, you will be immersed in that college life. Um, and rent is very affordable, depending on how many roommates you have. If you have one to two roommates, you're probably gonna be closer to that six to $800 a month in rent. If you're uh, three to four roommates, you'll probably be uh, closer to that three to $500 a month in rent. Um, and then, like I said, we do have that community that surrounds our university and we'll put different, uh, um, uh, different events will be put on in the downtown area. As you see, we do have concerts in the park. Um, we put on our Thursday night market, but we'll block off the roads and we'll have vendors from all over the community come out and they'll set up different um, booths where students, faculty, people from the community can actually come and check out those booths. 
And then we do have clubs for students to get involved with, ranging from all kinds of different types. We have religious clubs, outdoor adventure, sports clubs, and we have Greek life. And I mean, you pretty much name it, we have it so students can get involved. It's a great place to meet fellow students, um, just you know, getting into the things that you love. Now we do have that plus there because um, we always wanna give students the opportunity to build on what we have here on the university. And so if you go through that list and you think something should be up there that's not up there, you can actually create that club on campus. All it takes is yourself, um, three of your friends and an advisor to sign off on and you can create that. And just so you know, almost nothing is off the table. One year we did have a My Little Pony Club here on campus. Now let's get into the majors. We do offer a wide variety. We have 120 majors that we do offer here at CSU Chico. Lots of popular majors from our science, from our business, from our construction management, to our criminal justice and even liberal studies being a top five major on our campus. Um, of those 120 majors, only three are going to be impacted and that's our nursing, our recording arts and our social work. Um, applying to those does take a secondary application as well as meeting specific criteria. If you apply to one of the other 117 majors that we offer here on campus and you're accepted to our university, you should have no problem getting into that program and getting through that program in the four years it should take to complete that major, assuming you take the required units every semester, of course. And then just some stats about our university. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 23 to 1, which is really good because um, we are a medium sized campus with almost uh, 17,000 students that attend CSU Chico. Um, our average class size is 30, and then our top 10 regional public university in the West, and best value top 10% of all U.S. colleges for quality, portability, and alumni success. Okay, so for the application filing period, for you seniors out there, um, you're going to be, or even you transfer students, you're going to be applying from October 1st through December 15th. So you do have two and a half months once the application opens up. But <clears throat> um, for our impacted majors, though, that deadline will be November 30th. So for that social work, nursing, as well as recording arts, you'll need to get that completed by November 30th. The application fee is $70, but that fee can be waived if you qualify for the fee waiver at the end of that application. Now, you don't have to fill anything extra. Um, it will tell you in the application if you qualify for that fee waiver or not. Okay, so the requirements for our freshmen coming in for fall 22, you only have to meet your A through G requirements with a C minus or better, and then, <clears throat> you have to meet the GPA minimum. For a CA resident right now, whether you're in our service area or out of our service area, um, that GPA minimum will be a 2.5 uh, minimum. And then we also will take supplemental criteria. And then for transfer students, you just have to meet the 60 transferable semester units, 30 of those in general education, complete your uh, four golden courses and earn a qualifying GPA. Um, we do offer financial aid, so students who are looking to fill out um, for the financial aid or for the California Dream Act application, those filing periods are from October 1st through March 2nd, but they will accept them through June 30th. Now, we do offer in-house uh, scholarships for students um, uh, known as a wild, Wildcat Scholarships. All it is is one simple application. It's just a short answer and a letter of re recommendation. Um, the way you answer that short answer, they will actually match up to the best scholarships that will suit your need if you're eligible. Um, and then it says we offer over 700 different types, but that's not all we're giving out. I believe last year we gave out a little over 2,000 scholarships with students receiving multiple scholarships. So if you want to bring us additional funds, it's a great way to do that. Um, the application fee is from January 2nd and closes February 22nd. Cool thing is, if you want to apply for that fall 22 semester and you know you want to go to CSU Chico, you can actually apply for that this upcoming spring and they'll credit that to your fall 22 term. And that is the end of the CSU Chico presentation. Um, great ways to contact us. You can get at, get at us at info at csuchico.edu or you can go onto the admissions webpage through CSU Chico where you can connect with us virtually. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have CSU Maritime Academy. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jeff Stein, the Senior Enrollment Services Counselor with um, Cal Maritime. Our official name is California State University Maritime Academy, but for obvious reasons, that doesn't fit on most forms. So we go by our more commonly known nickname. Um, there's a QR code that you'll see throughout the presentation. So if you uh, whip out your phones and just uh, snap a quick picture of that, it'll take you to our info, uh, info um, page, which I'm also gonna drop in the chat at the end of my um, brief presentation. That picture that you see there, that's an aerial shot of our campus. We are on about 46 west facing acres on the waterfront of the bay. So technically we are an hour inland from San Francisco in Vallejo, but we're across the water. So it doesn't really feel like inland. Um, so for folks in, in uh, you know, uh, Walnut Creek area, 
it's maybe a 35 to 45 minute drive with traffic, depending on what time of the day you're coming. But I did want to mention, um, even though you are in uh, a cl you're close by, we are a little unique of the campuses of the Cal State system because we do require that our students live on campus all four years. Now, no other CSU does this, but at the same time, we're the only maritime academy of the CSU system. We're also the only maritime academy west of Texas. So part of the reason that we ask our students to live on campus is because it helps create that sense of campus community through this um, very unique program. And we also have some evening and even very early morning, like I'm talking 4 a.m. activities that we ask of our students. So this kind of helps them prepare for success in that field. Um, we have, uh, as you saw there, we're right on the water. And since our name is Maritime, it's a focus on the water. So we kind of think of our campus as a living learning laboratory. Um, we emphasize global awareness. So I'm actually gonna talk about that in a little bit because um, college is an excellent time to travel. All of the CSUs offer study abroad programs um, and Cal Maritime offers additional travel programs um, either by ship or uh, by professional immersion. Um, we have small class sizes as well. Average class size is about 18. So you're looking at a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So you're really going to uh, have your faculty as, as resources as well as your peers. They become your professional network eventually when you graduate. Speaking of graduating, we do have the highest employment rate in the Cal State system at about 90% every single year. Again, a little unfair being the only Maritime Academy west of Texas. We offer seven majors. So we have three types of engineering, including mechanical engineering. We offer business administration, global studies, oceanography is brand new. We actually modeled it after um, Channel Island and uh, Humboldt's uh, marine science and ocean studies programs. Flattery is the most sincere form of, um, uh, sorry, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Uh, and then marine transportation um, is our most unique major. With 10 years of experience after graduation, you could be a ship captain of a container ship or a grand luxury cruise ship or tugboat, it's your choice. So that was our original major. But since then, we've obviously obviously expanded. Everything still leads back to the water. Um, I mentioned uh, the travel. It is a requirement for our students because it's an academic focus. So they're not necessarily going and studying in these other countries in lecture halls. While that is still an opportunity through study abroad, these programs are really designed to be more hands-on, giving them experience in the industry that they plan to go into. So some of our majors go out on our 500 foot training ship for a summer or two. And then the other majors, which includes business, global studies, and oceanography, fly to another country for about three weeks and live in that country, going to various professional activities throughout the day. Um, we have some programs that are impacted and some that are not. So again, business, global studies, and oceanography are not currently impacted. So it's the CSU minimum standards. If a student doesn't have that 2.5 weighted academic GPA from 10th and 11th, uh, 10th and 11th grade, then we'll take some other factors into consideration, including what you see here. But primarily, it's your extracurriculars, and then extra. We will award points for coursework beyond the minimum requirement in your A through D categories. Now for the impacted majors, um, you do have to meet the minimum requirements, but we're also gonna take a look at your math GPA. We're going to look at um, how many classes you took in the STEM areas, so engineering, computer science, uh, any type of technology, even automotive technology, we're gonna award points for all of that. And then educational programs that you did like AVID or um, uh, ROP or anything, Boy Scout, Sea, sea Scout, Sea Cadets, JROTC as well, we're awarding points for all of that. So essentially everything you used to put on your resume, there's now a place on the application on Cal State Apply in quadrant four, which is the very, very end where you can list all of these accomplishments. Last but not least, mechanical engineering, not to get all doom and gloom, but you absolutely have to have pre-calculus by the time you graduate. Unfortunately, there's no wiggle room on that requirement because you go straight into calculus. The other majors have an opportunity to take college pre-calc, mechanical engineers in order to get you out in four years, you have to start out with calculus your freshman year of college. Um, we have plenty of financial aid opportunities, but our biggest recommendation is look outside of the academy because the majority of our foundation scholarships, meaning funds that we fundraise for our students are actually reserved for upperclassmen to keep them here. Because like I said, there's only seven maritime academies on the West Coast. So you can't go, unfortunately for some of our programs, you can't transfer to another CSU or private institution and finish that degree. So we, tr we need to keep our students here to finish um, their unique programs. Um, last but not least, um, some next steps and contact information. This is a great one to screenshot. Like I said, 
uh, take a picture that QR code application is the same as the rest of the CSU system. We are one of the campuses, however, that has early action. You apply any time in October, automatically considered um, to get an early decision on December 15th, but you still have until May 1st to make your decision, to make your commitment. So no extra pressure. Um, follow us on social media. We're constantly posting the cool things that our students are doing. And you'll also be able to get a sneak peek into the absolutely gorgeous uniform that our students wear. Did I mention it's khaki? It goes with everything. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you so much for that presentation. As a reminder to all of our participants, if you guys have questions for any of the institutions you are hearing from today, definitely don't hesitate to drop those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have University of California, Riverside. Thank you so much, everybody. As mentioned, this is UCR. My name is Jeremy McWells. I'm the Assistant Director of High School Evaluation and Recruitment, and it's a pleasure to be here with you all sharing a little bit of information about UCR. We like to say that in terms of your experience, it will be unique. You'll have an experience of being uh, folks being committed to you and an experience of having a real um, a real time, a real experience in terms of your collegiate time here at UCR. Unique in the sense of we have a very friendly and supportive campus that is dedicated to diversity. We have spaces on campus specifically dedicated to different demographics that we enroll in our classes. So for instance, we have what's called Costo Hall, which houses different demographics such as African American Studies Program or LGBTQ Resource Center and many, many more. So this is a great space if you're not familiar or you're coming out of the demographic if you want to learn more, if you want to collaborate, this is a great space to just hang out, uh, used for lunch space, technology, events, all that good stuff. Committed, we have prestigious faculty and everyone is going to say it, but we really mean it. And the fact that we have, a, you know, a decent size of a campus that you could still have that collegiate experience with learning from prestigious faculty members, but also building relationships with them. That leads to impactful research opportunities. We are a public-based research institution, which means that you're going to get plenty of experience when it comes to research and in the field, and you do not have to be just a STEM major in order to do so. Real, the culture of inclusion, we're all in this together. And in terms of accessibility and attainability, whatever is involved at UCR, whatever is being offered, any student can attain. And we have a couple rankings. I will highlight just one for the sake of time. Uh, UC ranks amongst the best colleges in the country for quality and affordability. What more can you want as a student um, than the quality of education, the affordability to go alongside with it? In terms of the stats and what we look like today, UCR, we have just around 26,000 students enrolled today with 1,100 over, uh, over 1,100 faculty members with a 21 to one student to faculty ratio. Now this is more so for your upper division courses. So you'll have the best of both worlds where you're having a bit of that lecture hall experience for your first couple of years and then it will transition to a more intimate learning environment with around over 100,000 alumni changing the world. And as you can see, we are located in Southern California, for those of you who may not be aware of our location, right in between LA and San Diego County. And we're right in between Hollywood and Disneyland, Palm Springs, Coachella. So our location is pretty prime when it comes to where we are located. In terms of academics, we have um, around seven academic colleges within UCR. Uh, our College of Engineering, for example, um, all of our colleges, I would say, have very unique aspects to it. The College of Engineering, for example, has what's called the BS plus MS program, where essentially you could attend your four years, add an extra, a fifth year, if you will, to that experience, and you'll be able to walk away with both your bachelor's and your master's. And that's something that you will work on with advising. Our College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences has our creative writing major, which is the only creative writing major offered in the UCs. Our College of Natural Agricultural Sciences does offer a different STEM program, what's called the Entomology Program, the Study of Insects. Our Graduate School of Education offers one undergraduate program for those who are looking to pursue a career in, educa in education. Our School of Business has a AACSB accreditation, which only 5% of business schools have. Our School of Public Policy ranges everywhere from economic to international policy. So if that's something you're looking into, the creation of law, that could certainly be an idea for you. And then the School of Medicine, we do have a School of Medicine on campus. It's very popular. Um, our advisors work with undergraduate students, even if they do not specialize or major in STEM. So that's something that is a huge advantage. You do not have to be a STEM student, once again, to pursue a career in medicine here at UCR. I've mentioned research, just to let you know, um, we have a couple of uh, uh, examples listed down here. Um, this 
um, the, the student to the right, Roxanne, Roseanne Carmen, uh, was able to conduct research across uh, about a few psych, neuroscience, a few different departments here. And that's just an example of how the transdisciplinary approach here at UCR will go for you when it comes to research. You won't just be conducting research with just one department, you'll have the experience to get in with other faculty members, with other departments, and have a more holistic view when it comes to doing research here on campus. We have a university honors program. What you need to know as students is a GPA requirement is a 3.6 um, average GPA, and there are tons of benefits that come along with being in our honors program, a four-year learning community, which is our residence hall specifically for honors program students. Uh, it comes with certain scholarships and priority registrations. What more can you really want? For more information there, honors.ucr.edu is going to be the place to go. Housing, we're always, 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 always looking to improve our housing. We just recently opened up what's called the North District, which is for our upperclassmen. And we also what's called uh, open what's called our Dundee Glasgow Residence Hall, which is for our incoming freshmen. So that would be you all. Has everything from a bakery, lounge areas, gymnasium. It's a two-story uh, building. Uh, two-sided as well. So you have two sets of buildings, if you will, uh, with a lot of different event amenities that I wasn't able to mention at this particular time. But even, you know, as you're coming in to as you are becoming a current student, a upperclassman, we have plenty of residence hall and campus apartment options. Getting involved and staying active, I'll keep it brief here. We have over 500 student organizations, Greek life, cultural, academic, networking. We also have our famous concerts that hosted the likes of Lil Uzi Vert, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, YG, and many, many more. So we definitely have the entertainment here for you as well, um, as, as well as our cultural festivals that we work alongside local um, city officials as well. So we're really getting, once again, an all around experience when it comes to getting involved and staying active. In financial aid, we have plenty of financial aid opportunities. Our most popular one is going to be, of course, the blue and gold, as you see here, the opportunity plan, which covers around 100% of UC system-wide tuition and fees for eligible families earning less than $80,000 per year. So as you can see, we're not just you know, talking the talk of being about diversity and inclusivity and equity. We're really putting our, our, our you know, funds where they need to go when it comes to providing an equal experience for all of those who want to come to UCR. In terms of admission requirements, a lot of you already know this, A through G requirements will need to be met with a C or better with a GPA of a minimum 3.0. And just to let you know, UCR is test free until fall 2024. You do not have to submit the SAT or ACT when it comes to the admission process. However, you can use it. You can submit it uh, to potentially meet the requirements for eligibility or for course pl placement after you enroll. And for more information about UCR, you can always scan that QR code there if you want to take your phones out <clears throat> for about 10 seconds. Um, and you can always contact us at admissions.ucr.edu slash ask. Thank you so much. You all take care. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have UC San Diego. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Kristen Livingston. I'm an admissions officer at UC San Diego. UC San Diego is the southernmost campus of the University of California. We're actually located in the city of La Jolla, so we're about 20 minutes north of downtown San Diego. We're housed on 1,200 acres of land and we're about a 10 minute walk down to the beach. Your temperature doesn't change much while you're a student with us. Your winter temperatures will get down to about 63 degrees and in the summer we get up to a whopping 77 degrees. We offer over 140 plus majors for you, over eight disciplines, and those disciplines are listed here on this slide for you. I invite all of you to go to our website where you can get additional information about each and every major that we do offer at UC San Diego. You'll note that we do have some capped majors and they are highlighted in blue for you. If you're interested in any of our capped majors, you do need to declare that major when you do apply to us. You'll also be asked to list an alternate major on your application as well. One thing that makes UC San Diego very unique within the UC system is we have a very unique college system on our campus. A lot of times when students think about colleges related to universities, they often think they have majors attached. At UC San Diego, you can have any major at any of our seven colleges. The differences in our colleges are the philosophies of each of the colleges. And from their philosophies, they've developed their own general education requirements. It's really important if you're planning on applying to UC San Diego that you take the time to research our college system. One of the questions on the application will ask you to rank the colleges one through seven when you do apply. 
How you rank your colleges will have no bearing on your admission. Once we know we're going to admit you, at that point, we'll look to see how you ranked your colleges, and we'll try to give you your first choice college. Each of the colleges has their own academic advising. They also have their own student support, honors programs, and if you decide to live on campus, you're housed at your college as well. Now, as a student at UC San Diego, you're still gonna take classes throughout the entire university, and you're gonna take classes with students from the other six colleges. So a question we often get is, well, why does UC San Diego have this college system? And the reason we have the colleges is we want you to have the feeling of being in a large tier one research university, yet having that feel of that small college to go back to. And our students really like that about our campus. I'll drop a link in a bit about the colleges so it'll give you all those general education classes that you can look at and the philosophies of all of the colleges as well. This does share with you our undergraduate population. You can see that two thirds of our students come to us as first year students. Our average time to degree for our first year students are four years and our student to faculty ratio is 26 to one. This site speaks to you about housing and the website for housing is on this website. The intent of our housing office is to offer incoming freshmen housing for at least their first year. So if you'd like more information about housing, definitely go to their website, it has a lot of great information there for you. We have over 500 student clubs and organizations at UC San Diego. So hopefully you'll find a club or organization that you might want to affiliate with. We have, do, do have Greek life, so we do have fraternities and sororities, so we don't have Greek housing on our campus. We're very excited because we now are a Division I school. We're part of the Big West Conference. And if you'd like to get more information about any of our Division I sports teams, if you go to our athletics department, all of that will be online for you. So of course, we're looking at all the same things that all the other colleges are looking for as well. And our admissions website is on this site, so I encourage you to go in and get all the information. You'll note you'll have to have your A through G classes completed by the end of your senior year. The University of California is allowing students to take courses for pass or credit grade in lieu of letter grades through summer of 21. So you don't have to be concerned if you've got a pass or a credit grade. We'll use that to satisfy your A through G classes. We are going to calculate your GPA using your 10th and 11th grade A through G classes only, using up to eight UC approved honors AP or IB courses in that GPA computation. You'll note that UC San Diego as well is not going to be using your SAT or ACT test scores as a factor in admissions through 2024. We do look at your application holistically, so we're looking at everything you've done inside and outside of the classroom. So I really encourage you to make sure to include all those phenomenal things on your application when you are applying. Please remember that UC San Diego does not accept letters of recommendation, nor are we able to have interviews with our applicants. So it's really upon you to share all those phenomenal things you've done throughout your high school career. This shares with you our first year snapshot for those students that we admitted for fall of 21. You can see that we had a 34% admit rate and was also shared with you our middle 50% GPA range for those students that were admitted to our campus. This does share with you our budget for one academic year. UC San Diego is on the quarter system as are all UCs, excluding Merced and Berkeley and they are on the semester system. So we have a fall, winter and spring quarter. Also on this site is our financial aid website. And on that site, you'll get all kinds of information about financial aid. Just by applying to UC San Diego, we're gonna look for any merit-based scholarship you may want to apply for. And also the application for admission is the application for scholarships. So make sure to complete that section on your application when you're applying to us. Of course, we wanna stay connected with you throughout the fall. So we have a lot of phenomenal programming for you in the fall. Our first is our fall showcase, which is the first Saturday in October. We're also having YUC San Diego presentations. We're gonna have future Tritons week for you in November, as well as Triton Talks. If you would like to receive email updates, that website is on this site for you as well. And of course, we do have a YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel has a lot of our past Triton Talks on it, as well as information from all of our presentations. And finally, of course, we wanna stay connected with you. Currently at UC San Diego, we're not offering in-person campus tours. I encourage you to go to our, our campus tour website. And once we're able to have in-person tours, of course, we want to invite you down to the campus. If you're in San Diego and the tours aren't happening quite yet, we have a self-guided tour you can take. So you're welcome to get that information from our tour website. And of course, I want to invite you to do our virtual tour. And in the near future, we're going to have live virtual tours. And that's where some of our college ambassadors will take you on a tour of the campus virtually. So thank you so much for your time this evening. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Our last institution for this session is UCLA.
Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna actually ask my colleague, Amanda, to join me for just a moment uh, to just say a few words before I get started. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Amanda Kibalowski and I am the Director of Admissions for the School of Theater, Film and Television at UCLA. Um, I wanted to show up and support my colleague, Sabrina here, and I will be in the chat to answer any questions you may have about the School of Theater, Film and Television. And I'll also put a link in for our information sessions. Thank you, Sabrina. Perfect, thank you. And I saw the Q&A in the chat just go. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly give you some information about UCLA. Um, as my colleague Amanda said, my name is Sabrina Johnson-Williams and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment for UCLA. What does that mean? That means that I live in Northern California, I work in Northern California and I work with you all. So I'm just gonna highlight a few things that I want you all to know about UCLA, but I'm gonna encourage you all to attend one of these things. So your phone should still be out from scanning those uh, QR codes earlier. So I want you to scan this one as well. And I wanna invite you to our virtual tours, connect with us on Instagram, get in our system and get connected with us. Uh, visit our brand blogs, our Instagrams, and lastly, our fall open house, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So I wanna introduce you to the number one public university in the nation and also the number one most applied to uh, school in the nation as well. In terms of your success in graduating from our campus, we have a 83% uh, graduation rate for four years and a 91% overall graduation rate. Now for students who started their first year with us, we have an actual 96% retention rate. And these are just some of the schools that are recruiting our students actively for graduate programs. Some of the programs that are, are the companies that are recruiting our students for graduate programs, uh, for grad school, for internships, for employment, post-graduation. And these are some of our famous alumni that you all should know, but if you don't know them, get to know them. There's one that I like to highlight, and that's one of the uh, mayors, the first African-American mayor of Los Angeles, which is Tom Bradley. Um, he brought the Olympics to California in the 80s. Well, I'm here to say the Olympics is coming back to Cali and UCLA will be the official host of Olympic Village for the athletes that will be coming to, our, to LA for the Olympics that year. Um, we are already gearing up for that. So we have two residential halls called Olympic and Centennial that will be opening this year for our students as we gear up towards hosting the athletes on our campus. So UCLA has 125 majors and over 90 minors. So over 125 majors, over 90 minors. And these are some of our newer majors and minors that you all can look forward to um, considering. I wanna highlight our six specialty schools because we do not admit by major unless you're going into one of those specialty schools. So that is the School of Engineering, the School of Theater, Film, and Television, the School of Music, the School of Arts and Architecture, and the School of Nursing. For those majors or majors in those areas, as you can see, like my colleague Amanda, they will be a part of that evaluation process for your application as well as admissions. So if you know you're going into one of those schools or major in one of those schools, make sure you're completing the supplemental portion of whatever is asked of you, whether it be a supplemental application, an audition, a portfolio, whatever it may be, make sure that you are, if you have to do it, make sure you're completing that part of the application. In terms of UCLA, we are a large institution. So we have over 40,000 students on our campus. However, we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio and two out of three of our classes are actually only 30 students or less. Now we have two very unique opportunities on our campus and it's called Fiat Lux Seminars, which means let there be light. That is the model of the UC system. And we have our clusters. Any student can take a Fiat Lux Seminar. It's about 15 students in those classes. So very small, very intimate. And then our clusters, you're actually knocking out four general air requirements out by taking this one class. It's a year long course and your professors rotate in and teach the same theme, but from their perspective. So a really, really cool opportunity for you all. Now, let's talk about living on campus. You will live on the hill and that's what we call it. It's on a hill, you walk down, right? We are voted number one for best food on a college campus. So if you eat, that should be important to you. We were voted number one for happiest freshmen as well. 
We are very excited to welcome our freshmen back to campus, to welcome last year's freshmen, so our current sophomores back to campus and guarantee housing. So our normal guarantee is three years of housing for freshmen and one year of housing for sophomores. So we're really excited uh, about all the opportunities that will happen on the campus. And about 98 to 99% of our freshmen actually live on campus. So it's a really great place to be. Now, in terms of livelihood, you heard my colleagues, Jeremy and Chris talk about that application, right? Well, we're gonna ask you as a UC system, what did you do with your time from ninth to 12th grade? And that's gonna be a part of the application. As you can see, uh, UCLA has a lot going on. So we have more than a thousand clubs and organizations on our campus and we have three levels of athletics as well. So we have our intramural sports, our club sports, which are competitive and our division one NCAA sports, which we are the first to win hundred NCAA championships. And we are uh, about 118 right now. I wanna say shout out to our basketball team who was in March Madness last year. Now, the last two things that I wanna say to you is just consider coming to LA to that sunshiny weather. You will be in Westwood Village quite a bit. That's where students go for internships, for jobs, to chill, to shop, to go to movie premieres, whatever it is, farmer's markets. You'll do that in Westwood Village. And know that we like to say we're nestled in uh, the three Bs, which is Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Bel Air. So we like to say we're nestled right in that area. Um, and there's just a lot of opportunity for you all to get involved with the community and get involved with the campuses in LA. Now, my last little facts that I wanna highlight is uh, just some fun facts. We, uh, are, we helped to build the internet. As I said before, we're hosting Olympic Village and we were voted num number one for best food on a college campus. We have programs like Startup UCLA, if you wanna uh, start your own company or your own business and undergraduate research centers to help you to um, figure out what type of research you wanna do. Now, remember, that the UC system, there's one application and you're gonna fill out one application for all of our campuses. You'll pay per campus, but one application and you're gonna pick the campuses. So all of the requirements that you've already heard, know that they are the same for UCLA as well. So go ahead and scan that QR code. We have our open house that'll be starting this Saturday and it's going until next Thursday. We're doing giveaways for every session. We're having workshops in every capacity, every area that's gonna start on Saturday and then go through the week. And we're gonna have Instagram takeover. So connect with us there as well. Thank you very much. And if you need to contact us, write down that number and send that email. Thank you. All right, everybody, that was an information loaded session. So hopefully you got a lot of good information from all these schools. We have come to the end of our programming, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five-question survey, and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. There is another session of college information sessions right after this, so definitely go back to the schedule and figure out which ones you'd like to attend. And after this, we will also be able to have this recording posted within about a week, as well as any other recordings from tonight at strivescan.com slash MDSUD. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and have a great evening.